Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio. So today, I am showing you a really fun-looking new Octillery card, which is going to be coming out in the Sun and Moon 4 expansion, Crimson Invasion, which is going to be coming out in November. Ladies and gentlemen... It's Octillery, and I like Octillery. Now, being a water Pokemon is quite handy nowadays because it means you're hitting weakness against Volcanion and Turtonator. Although, do remember that a lot of these fire decks now are also starting to play Ho-Oh as well. And although it's easy to forget, I've done it myself on occasions, Ho-Oh is weak to lightning, not water. So, unfortunately, you can't just pop a water Pokemon in your deck and instantly beat these fire decks. Although Ho-Oh does take four energy and is really awkward and really relies on Kiawe and can't attack the turn after. It, it, it's fine. It's not the best Pokemon ever. And yes, I know Ho-Oh can attack the following turn, but not with the main attack. Anyway, back to Octillery. Weakness to Grass is quite good at the moment because the only really good Grass Pokemon out there is Golisopod. Or Tapu Bulu. But both of them hit for 120 as their basic attack. So, you know what? Doesn't really matter. You're getting one hit KO in anyway. In your face, weakness. 100 HP is around about right for a stage 1. Kind of low, but not the end of the world. And a retreat cost of 2 is actually quite heavy. And as you're going to see in a minute, this is really awkward. Because you shouldn't really ever have 2 energy on Octillery. So, the first attack here is kind of useful. Ink Spit. If the defending Pokemon tries to attack during your opponent's next turn, your opponent flips a coin if Tails that attack does nothing. Now your opponent flips during their turn, so you can't use Victini here to give you a 75% chance of invulnerability. It is very much a case of it's going to be 50-50. The thing is, however, your opponent's defending Pokemon is the one that has to flip if they attack. So if your opponent uses a Guzmart and switches, or if your opponent retreats or uses a switch, then it's no longer the defending Pokemon. So if there's a different Pokemon active, then it doesn't need to flip a coin. So it is a little bit awkward in that respect. However... This can buy you some turns. This isn't an attack that you want to use constantly every turn. This is an attack where it's a case of, ah, I've got nothing to do. Think of it kind of like Froakie's Bubble. It's not great. And to be honest, Froakie's Bubble is just flip a coin if head's paralysis. This is if your opponent doesn't get out the active, then they flip a coin, which is a lot less reliable. But like I've said, if you really need to buy yourself a turn, if you've got nothing else to do, this is fine. It's not great, but it's fine. And for a colorless energy, means you can use it in any deck, meh. And now on to the second attack. And I'm going to be honest, if I'd seen Octillery a few days ago, this second attack would look rubbish. But now I actually really like it. One water, colorless energy, 40 damage. You may discard a special energy from your Pokemon. If you do, this attack does 80 more damage. So maybe you're playing something like Alolan Ninetales. Well, Alolan Ninetales is going to play the other Octillery anyway, so you put one of these in. Maybe you Aqua Patch onto Octillery. Then you pop a double colorless on there. Discard the double colorless to do 100. 20 which could actually be really handy because if all you've got is a double colorless and a basic water a lowland nine tails can only do ice blade for 50 you need two water to do double edge for 160 whereas octillery can do for 120 but that ladies and gentlemen that was a couple of days ago we're living in a different world now we are living in a world where counter energy has been revealed and i did a video about counter energy a couple of days ago and I told you that counter energy is amazing and counter energy is amazing and counter energy really is what you need for octillery counter energy turns this from an occasional uh, it's all right in some decks like Alolan Ninetales when you're desperate attack into a oh I could put this in a whole bunch of decks and it will be great attack so counter energy, for those of you who may have forgotten or who didn't see my video, it is an energy that is a colorless energy. 
But if it's attached to a non-EX, non-GX, and you're behind on prizes, it counts as two energy of any type. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what is so gosh darned exciting. Because here's the deal. You're behind on prizes in a deck that's playing counter energy. Maybe you're playing against Volcanian Turtonator. You don't have a great energy. You go down by a prize. All of a sudden, you pop a counter energy on Octillery. You then discard the counter energy attached to Octillery and do 240 damage. One of the huge downsides I said about counter energy is that being a special energy, it is vulnerable to being discarded by stuff like Drampa or the new Kartana whose ability is just an enhanced hammer. But that's not an issue if you're discarding it yourself anyway. And of course, discarding the energy means that you're less vulnerable to something like Gardevoir, for instance. But do remember that you've got low HP. Gardevoir's only going to need four energy to get a KO. And this is where Octillery comes in, ladies and gentlemen. As a tech, with counter energy, and the best part about it is, even though Octillery is a stage one, this is a single card tech. Because what you do is you play the other Octillery. We're in a format now where Versus Seeker has rotated out. So our decks are getting a little bit less consistent because no longer can we just play a Versus Seeker to grab a Professor Sycamore or an N. We've got to be a little bit more creative and what a lot of decks are going to do, and a lot of decks like Gardevoir, like Alolan Ninetales are already doing it, they're going to play a 1-1 one, one, or 2-2 two, two Octillery line, which means you're already playing 1 or 2 Remoraid. So if you're already playing Remoraid, you can literally play one copy of this Octillery just in case you need it. And we're all playing Rescue Stretcher nowadays, so it's really not hard to recover if you need it to. So in any deck that's playing Counter Energy and the other Octillery, and I assure you, and I know at the moment we're in a big GX, EX heavy format, there are going to be plenty of decks in the future that are playing both this Octillery and Counter Energy. And in all of those decks, this is an amazing single card tech. Because all of a sudden, you have a hard counter to fire decks. And that is amazing. Take something like Registeel. Now, I know I talk about Registeel too often at the moment, but I love Registeel. By the way, there's a link to Registeel and Counter Energy in the description, so you can go and check them out. Registeel, little bit vulnerable to fire decks like Volcanian Turtonator. Now you've got Reg Ice, who's a pretty good counter here, but Reg Ice takes a water and a double colorless. Well, if you're trying to use Registeel, Regirock, and Reg Ice, maybe Counter Energy is a great idea, so it can count as energy for any of those Pokemon, as long as you're behind on prizes. So if you're playing an Octillery line anyway, for consistency, you play a single one of these Octillery, and then if you end up going behind on prizes to a Fire deck, you just go for it with Special Cannon for a single Counter Energy. I don't love Octillery in isolation. I think that the first attack is way too easy to get around because your opponent can just switch or retreat. I think the second attack is way too awkward having to have a water energy and a special energy on there. I just think it's a bit weird and annoying. But if you're already playing Remoraid for the other Octillery, and you're already playing Counter Energy, and even if that's not happening immediately, I promise you, there are going to be plenty of decks in the next couple years that are playing both of those things. Then all of a sudden, this becomes great. Single Energy, instant counter to any fire deck other than Ho-Oh, because ho is weak to lightning. It's great, ladies and gentlemen. It's great. So great that I'm going to give this free Wassies. This is not a card around which you will be building a deck. It's not what it does. It is a card to stick in as a tech in a deck where you can afford to do so. And I am convinced 
There are going to be plenty of decks where you can afford to do so. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio for some live action. And there will be a ptcgo stream coming tomorrow at 7pm UK time. Join in. It'll be fun. And if you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, etc. You can do so at patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.